Welcome to the Control Engineering Webcast, Reduce Time to Market with Virtual Commissioning, sponsored by Siemens. I'm your moderator, Mark Hosky, and I'm happy to join you today on behalf of Control Engineering. Here are some tips to get the most from today's webcast. If you're experiencing issues with your slides or audio, refresh your browser or click the Refresh Media button directly under the presenter's picture. You can control the volume of the webcast by adjusting the volume on your computer or by adjusting the volume on the webcast platform. If you're having technical problems with the audio or the slide presentation, click on the question mark at the top right corner of the screen to access a list of system checks to try before contacting an online technician. But if you do need help, type a message in the Ask a Question box and someone will get to you as quickly as possible. Type questions for our speakers anytime during the webcast in the Ask a Question box at the left side of the screen. The live Q&A will begin after the presentation concludes. Today's webcast is being recorded and you will receive an email within a week with the link to the on-demand event. To download a certificate of completion and a PDF copy of the presentation, use the Event Resources tab on the left side of the screen. Those documents will also be available with the on-demand version of the webcast. Now we will hear from the sponsor of today's webcast, Siemens. At the conclusion of the video, you may experience a few seconds of silence to compensate for varied internet speeds. Please stay tuned after the video for the start of today's presentation. The pace of digitalization is unprecedented, and it's completely transforming our world, harnessing new technologies across the landscape of industry to fundamentally change the way we live. The factory of the future will be created with intelligent connected machines that are both adaptable and extendable and can provide strategic operational insights to improve efficiency. It's all enabled by digital threads that turn silo data into connected disciplines and processes. These threads form the neural network of a digital twin, a virtual entity which mirrors the physical world, turning data into insight to continuously design, build, and optimize throughout the product and production life cycle. This approach gives engineers new opportunities to create breakthrough innovation, leveraging virtual simulation and field intelligence to deliver customization and accelerate time to commission. Adaptable production lines reduce setups and cycle times, and a digital manufacturing process optimizes for quality and shop floor throughput. During and after field commissioning, the physical machine feeds data back to the digital twin, so teams can predict problems, proactively service machines, and improve the next generation of equipment. Siemens can help you achieve rapid digital transformation, powered by the world's most comprehensive digital twin. There's no need to dream about the future. It's already here. I'm happy to introduce today's presenters, Scott Felber and Ken Sears. Ken Sears is director of the NX New Products Product Management uh, New Markets Product Management team at Siemens. He has responsibility for product management for NX Mechatronics Concept Designer (MCD) for seven years. As well as MCD, Ken has worked on developing the NX strategy for the marine industry, and has been involved with NX in the marine industry since the early uh, 2000s. Ken has worked uh, for Siemens DI software for 25 years, and prior to working in the NX team, he held positions in the Team Center and Open Tools organizations. Scott Felber is an NX product engineering software manager, marketing manager, with Siemens Digital Industry Software. Scott's main task is to help customers and prospects identify value around the use of Siemens software products with the main focus on NX for design and how that integrates into their processes. He also can discuss the use of NX data in the upstream and downstream process to be bring the value of digital twin to life. He works with customers and prospects to help them build a plan to transform their businesses and processes 
by identifying non-value activities and ways to eliminate them. Before joining product marketing, Scott spent more than 15 years with pre-sales with a primary focus of selling to the industrial machinery companies. He has more than 30 years with Siemens Digital Industries Software and holds a Master of Science in Engineering Management from Marquette University and a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering from University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Thanks for joining us today, gentlemen. Scott, I'll hand it over to you. Thanks, Mark. I'm going to go ahead and get started now. So how do you become a catalyst for change and help your customers take advantage of industry trends? The machinery companies who build and service the most automated, flexible, and connected and adaptable machines are the ones that define the future. Let me share with you some of the ways machinery companies are working today to increase their competitive advantage. One is by increasing machine flexibility by adding capabilities machines, including adding automation and software-driven mechanisms. Even historically, mechanical and pneumatic systems are becoming more replaced with electronically controlled functionality. Another way is through increased connectivity. IIoT is combining smart sensors and cloud analytics to help build machine intelligence, enabling machines that can now adapt to their environment. And finally, companies are building strong, intense partnerships with their customers. These partnerships not only solidify traditional business models, they are also providing new business models, including subscription or production as a service and other innovative software-enabled service monitoring and machine optimization techniques. When we look at the industrial machinery landscape, we hear from our customers that there are several transformational trends that mark a significant turning point in the machine evolution that are currently reshaping engineering, manufacturing, and service operations for most machinery manufacturers. There is a marketed shift. There's personalized products and customized services, and machinery companies are challenged to design and build machines that support expanding product mixes and more rapid and frequent changeovers. And because consumer preference changes are more and more immediate, there is added pressure to innovate quickly and compress delivery cycles. Industrial component suppliers are quickly embracing IoT-enabled technology in their products. And machinery manufacturers are on a steep learning curve to take advantage of the petabytes of data that can be generated from today's machinery. This has rapidly changed the landscape for electrical and controlled engineers from huge increases in I.O. channels and new communication protocols to building intelligent programming that provides the most interactive and granular control of all the devices, of all of these devices. At the same time, there are insights to be gained from so much information that can be handled by automation and production processes. The trend of hyper automation requires vast amounts of data and cloud-based analytics to accelerate learning about machine behavior and performance to automate machine functions. Hyperautomation can be enabled by low-code tools that mine data analytics for many business processes. And finally, global competition has always existed, but now the competition comes from more flexible, agile startups that start from a basis of machine learning and are not encumbered by the existing business processes and legacy customer engagements. In many cases, the aging workforce in many parts of the world has forced employers to replace experience with machine learning and many machinery companies may not survive this transition. Understanding your customer and the effects of these trends on the market can be overwhelming, but in reality, the challenge of the machinery industry whether it's the OEM or the supplier or the downstream customer can be summarized under one commonality, and that is complexity. And the true disruptors in the machinery industry won't be those that try to limit complexity. We believe you need to move faster to bring innovative machines to markets faster than the competition. You need to lower development, production, and operating costs. You also need to create new business models to out-innovate, building differentiation through insights that are not easily duplicated. Well, we believe that the businesses that succeed will be the ones that embrace the complexity within the machinery industry and harness that complexity into their competitive advantage. 
We believe that the true disruptors in the machinery space will we'll embrace three key concepts in order to turn complexity into a competitive advantage. One, the most comprehensive digital twin. With insights and data from the comprehensive digital twin, companies can very accurately simulate the performance of their machines, allowing them to build more flexible and connected machines to handle a wider range of products, enable quick responses as consumer preferences change, and remember, any part of the real product or production environment that isn't represented by the digital twin cannot be simulated, therefore introducing risk into your business. Modern, adaptable, and personalized solutions. You must be able to provide people across your organization with the tools that are easy to use and able to pull information from many places and present that information to them in a way that is consumable for the task at hand. Making data alone available isn't helpful if it's presented in a confusing or complex way. It must be personalized to the person and their task. And finally, a flexible open ecosystem. Information technology does play a critical role in the pursuit of complexity as a competitive advantage. And no one tool can do it all. If the tools you choose do not work well together, your pursuit will fall, fall well short of your goal. Where we can help is through the application of our Accelerator portfolio. This is our integrated portfolio of software, services, and application development platform that encompasses all of Siemens digital products and technologies. By leveraging Accelerator, you can embrace complexity to achieve the competitive advantage and be well positioned to meet the challenges of tomorrow today. Our mechanical solution is driven by NX which allows you the most complete 3D design solution available to drive the digital twin. Your digitalization strategy needs to include consideration for the entire machine. You now must have a seamless connection that spans from theoretical concept to the machine in assembly and through operation upgrades and ultimately the end of life of the machine. All this is based on a single model and eliminates the need to re-enter data into other systems. With this, you have the most efficient and accurate business process. The digital twin allows you to lower your costs to manage your intellectual content. With all of the information that is now available, you can manage costs across assemblies, part manufacturing, and commissioning. This allows you to maximize revenue with proactive service, replacement part response, and upgrades to the machines. Siemens is the undisputed leader in the ability to deliver the digital twin. Now, let's look at the real cost of change and why the digital twin is so important. It's been stated many times on the rule of, the rule of that every step along the process that you do not catch a, a, um, an issue will cost you 10 times more to fix it in the next issue. So something that you could easily change during planning that would cost you a dollar, by the time you get it into operation, it will now cost you $1,000 to fix that response. That is what we're talking about here with the rules of quality. And we do supply you the most comprehensive digital twin. This allows you to break down the silos and have a true multi-domain coverage with closed lap closed loop back performance engineering and automation, which will significantly improve the quality and decreases time to market and extends the digital twin beyond just design for consumption across the entire machinery enterprise. The foundation of the digital twin is the digital twin of the product. The creation of that digital product starts with NX. NX is the next generation design platform where engineering meets tomorrow. NX has all the tools to allow you to create the most comprehensive digital twin. NX seamlessly combines multiple disciplines into a single platform. This platform allows your enterprise a complete solution that takes advantage of data without having to re-enter and remaster data into other systems. The tools within NX fall into really six different areas you need to address moving forward, and they are using the world's most productive modeler, moving to an electromechanical design tool, being able to bring simulation, manufacturing teams into the design at an earlier process, managing the entire process across multiple domains and disciplines, harnessing the power of the computer to produce your designs for you based on a set of key inputs and outputs, and embracing additive manufacturing for use to more than just prototyping. 
To do all this, you need to embrace a multidisciplinary platform that serves the entire enterprise. And what I'd like to do next now is I'd like to turn it over to Ken Sears, who's going to go into detail into one of these areas. He's going to talk about electromechanical design and why it's so important to get design and automation together early on in the design, in the design process. And with that, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Ken. So thanks, Scott, for that great introduction. Um, I want to start by talking about the breadth of simulation tools that Siemens has. Um, today, we're really going to be focused on the um, NX Mechatronics Concept Design Tool, and as, as Scott mentioned in his introduction. But uh, we also have at the kind of macro level the uh, <clears throat> plant simulation, which lets you um, simulate an, an entire production line or indeed an entire plant right down to uh, Component physics simulation with the uh, SimCenter Amazon product, where you can uh, have some <clears throat> simulate almost any level of detail components in, in your machine or your automation system. Um, as I say, we're going to talk about Mechatronics Concept Designer, which is um, somewhere in the middle. Um, so, what sort of machine are we looking at simulating with Mechatronics Concept Designer? Well, this is a uh, this is a demo machine that. Um, We've used in various trade shows and um, <clears throat> currently lives in a <clears throat> in a Siemens demo center in Chicago, with, where it uh, showcases um, hardware and automation hardware and design software in the uh, in the machinery industry. I mean, it's a. So what are we really talking about with MCD? We're very much focused on what we call multidisciplinary engineering. We recognize that. Um, when you design, when a company designs a new machine, really the mechanical design aspects of the machine are, are a pretty small uh, percentage of the overall design. Indeed, people tell me that about 90% of differentiation between machines now is in is in electrical, electronics, or automation design. It's not really in the, in mechanical design. An example we often use is this idea of a door. A door on this machine is really not a mechanical part. The, mechanic, the mechanical part is there, but uh, it's <clears throat> when you open the door, it trips a switch. It, it, the automation software may um, invoke a, 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 some kind of safety interlock and stop the machine. Um, it very much is the automation the electrical part of the design here is is very much more than. Uh, more important than, than the purely mechanical design aspects that Genex has traditionally been involved in. So what does Mechatronics Concept Designer let you do? I mean, this is, it's very much a tool for um, multidisciplinary engineering. We really start with Mechatronics Concept Designer from the, um, from the initial mechanical design. We add in kinematics, joint definitions, um, <clears throat> Identify how parts move relative to each other in the machine. Um, we can have we can capture use cam curves to capture complex movements and synchronize multiple parts. Um, we do kinematic as well as dynamic and articulation simulations. So we're not just looking at a kinematic model. It, it's a full physics model. There's some there's some modeling of friction, some modeling of gravity. Um, and we can use the um, combination of sequence, sequence definition and event-driven simulation in, in MCD to, to generate a pretty accurate um, simulation of the motion and the behavior of a machine and the automation. Um, <clears throat> we, um, we look at the machine design process as following this sort of life cycle and with MCD, we start right at the beginning, initial concept. You may just have a simple kind of stick figure model for your machine initially. Go go from that through um, <clears throat> more, ever more detailed concepts until you get to the uh, the final machine design, and you want to be able to automate that and show it moving as, as the real machines will do. We also go beyond that into the area of virtual commissioning. So not only can you drive MCD models with um, <clears throat> with something like a timeline? You can also you can alternatively hook them up the MCD up to a uh, a PLC or simulation of a PLC and have the PLC send signals to MCD to drive the uh, 
to drive the simulation and control the movement of um, machines or robots or whatever. So <clears throat> a kind of simple summary of MCD. You start up, we can start off in the top left corner here with a very simple um, sort of <clears throat> what I call a kind of stick figure app animation. So you get the, you get some idea of how, in this case, bottles are going to move around this bottling machine. Um, you can add more detail as you get as you go through the next step and and put a little more detail in your machine and uh, again kind of, <clears throat> kind of continue to add detail to optim optimize the motion um, and then finally show the kind of complete process here with the with the bottles being filled or <clears throat> so. And you know, don't just think of, of MCD as a simple <clears throat> kinematic simulation tool. As I said, we we support lots of um, types of sensors and um, machinery that you see in, a, in 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 the ever increasing complexity of an industrial machine. So, whereas a few years ago we really just simulated a single machine, like the machining center in this <clears throat> in this model. Um, nowadays, we're really looking at simulating a complete and simulation of designing a complete work cell like like this one. So, you know, we can support pick and place operations. We can automatically simulate with <coughs> synchronize with <coughs> with manufacturing tools. Um, we have a whole range of standard interfaces to <coughs> to connect and up to other simulation applications, um, and we can easily uh, <coughs> We have some fairly extensive behavior modeling capabilities. So let's move on and look at some of the uh, the features we've added to MCD in in recent recently. So this is fairly new. We've we've done a lot of work in recent releases to support um, defining robot paths. Um, so in this case, you can define a sequence of poses for your robot and then control how the robot moves between those. Um, those poses. Um, if there's multiple solutions to the inverse kinematics problem in this, we can pick the solution that, that makes sense in the particular workflow we're doing. Um, <clears throat> this is another thing we've done recently, which is supporting um, the creation of motion envelopes. So here we've got this simple robot motion. We can select the kind of rigid components in this robot and decide that we want to see the motion envelope with the two components at the end, not the whole robot. And <clears throat> MCD will calculate for you the motion envelope from the previous simulation. So there it is. Um, you can rotate it around, you can look at it, you can decide whether the um, that em envelope is acceptable. Does it get too close to some other part of the machine? Is it potentially dangerous? So something <clears throat> something that you do a lot in machine design, and you know we're trying to make it as easy as possible. Um, we have support for laser distance scanning tool, two D two D distance scanners, um, and basic support for um, <clears throat> autonomously guided vehicles. Um, we're not trying to position MCD as a, as a tool for de designing AGVs. We're really looking at being able to support AGVs within a within a machine to maybe pick up um, components that are finished in one stage of a manufacturing process and, and pass them on to the next stage. You can see here we have these two AGVs moving. We have graphs showing um, showing speed and the uh, minimum distance to another object. We have some signal logic so that in this case. When the machine coming down from the top detects the other machine, the other AGV, it stops, and eventually the other one stops when it finds the when it detects the uh, man emptying the box. Um, so also within <clears throat> typically within within a within a machine, then material changes shape. So on the bottom right here, we have a kind of an example of a pipe being bent in a in a simple machine, and on the left we can see <clears throat> a uh, stock material running that running through a machine and being cut into eight different components. And within an MCD simulation, 
those components are, if you like, first class objects, we can pick them up with a robot or, or do whatever we want to uh, later on in the simulation. So to show how this all comes together, we have this kind of work cell, which has a, a machine center, two robots, a couple of conveyors, and a simple AGV. And what we're really seeing here is that <clears throat> sort of blanks move through the machine. They get, um, they get swapped. Actually, we put a little blue washer on the, on the, <clears throat> on the part initially. And then, um, the um, the blank of the of the new part new component in the machine gets put on the machining center, and a finished part gets put back on the conveyor. Um, we see the uh, I think we put the blue washer on. We see the machining center start to change, load a tool, and go away and. Um, machine the new blank part while the uh, while the original part the finished part gets moved down the conveyor it gets picked up and gets put on the AGV so so MCD really is um, you know it's perfectly able to do quite complex sequences concurrently um, and You can see that the actual machining, the machining center here is being driven by this part program on the left. Um, we can have interruptions in the process. So you'll see the operator here <coughs> on the left um, <coughs> move through and um, break that um, safety curtain, laser safety curtain there. And it, when, she, when she does that, the machine will stop. Um, and when she backs away again, the uh, the machine will automatically start again. So this really shows the sort of the way that we can simulate a <clears throat> a fairly complete machining center in um, in MCD. And uh, I'd like to say this is all done in MCD, but in fact, this is MCD working with um, with three other two other. <clears throat> Other simulation tools. So the um, the robot motions are actually being calculated by um, the Kuka Kuka office light, and that is sending back the joint positions to MCD. So the MCD graphic shows that, and the um, the machining center is actually being modeled in um, in the Siemens Create by My Virtual Machine application. So MCD is just sending that application, telling that application when to start, sending it the part program, and again getting the um, the joint positions and motion and tool change operations back to uh, to show all the all the um, different components of the work center working together. Um, so moving on from the design aspects of MCD, um, uh, okay. there's a bit of a lag in changing slides here. Um, I want to talk a little bit at the end here about virtual commissioning. Um, as well as being a design, I, I mentioned in the previous simulation we were, we were sending information to other simulation tools like the um, the KUKA robot office lights and getting back information about how the uh, the robots have moved. Um, <clears throat> a big use of, virtual, of uh, MCD is virtual commissioning, where instead of driving MCD via some kind of time-based controller, we're actually simply having the MCD simulation react to the uh, output of a of either a simulated PLC or a uh, or a or a real hardware PLC. So that um, the MCD, the motion in MCD is actually being driven by an automation program, and um, <clears throat> users can use the MCD simulation to prove their, their their automation program. And we actually have a lot of customers that come to us after they've used MCD and say that uh, they were able to test their um, automation program in MCD so well that this was 
the machine they designed was the first one. They'd never had a collision when they gone from virtual commissioning to real commissioning, which I think is a, which obviously gives them a big cost saving. So we talk, as I mentioned briefly, we have two aspects, two types of, um, of virtual commissioning software in a loop where we bring in an MC, we bring in a, a model from a CAD system, either an X or another CAD system. <clears throat> we create the, um, the motion and automation features on that model. We have it um, potentially have um, a program like the Siemens tier portal to generate the detailed automation program. And then that program is, is run on a software simulation of a PLC, like um, PLC Sim Advanced here from the, from the Siemens PLCs, but obviously we also support um, <clears throat> other vendors, PLCs or controllers like, um, like the KUKA one in the previous slide. Um, in hardware in the loop, it's really very similar in as much as on the MCD side, we really do the same thing. On the automation side, we actually connect a real a real hardware PLC or controller up to MCD, um, typically using a, a standard interface like um, OPC, and um, <clears throat> and be able to test um, a real live automation program on real hardware. So as an, as an example of virtual commissioning, we got a simple well, <clears throat> we got a case here where the uh, KUKA Office Light is no, sorry. This is <clears throat> this is the AB, ABB Robot Studio controlling um, a robot within a um, within a simple machine. Um, in this particular example, we are connecting between the ABB software and MCD using the Siemens Simit tool. Um, we could equally well do this with um, with OPC. Or another standard. It's just um, we thought you this this is kind of a nice demo to show. So um, finally, I really I really want to re-emphasize in the, in the whole virtual commissioning world that you know MCD is a Siemens product and and we certainly support Siemens automation hardware, but we are also very active in supporting um, <clears throat> automation hardware and. Um, and software from from other vendors. Uh, we have an increasing number of customers and, that are now using various different vendors um, automation tools with it with MCD. Um, <clears throat> so using MCD for virtual commissioning or as a digital twin, if you like, it it, it opens up other opportunities for for our customers. Um, we have customers now that are actively using MCD. In their sales phases, so um, a machine builder's salesman might go along with a, with an M to a customer with an MCD solution simulation and uh, let the customer actually look at the machine they want to buy and potentially interact with the machine through a software simulation of the control panel um, with a bit more time to prepare. Then sales sales engineer can also create a modified machine and and um, if they're building a custom machine, then they can actually show the customer that custom machine working um, before they uh, before they close the deal. Um, and of course, all this stuff will work on the cloud as well. You don't these days. You don't have to go to uh, the customer. You can show the simulations running across the cloud, and uh, <clears throat> customers interacting with the simulations remotely. Um, Another thing we see is, is training. We uh, we have people now that are using the virtual commissioning technology to actually train their users before a machine before a machine exists, and and again this lets them save save cost by getting a machine into production much more much more quickly. So I guess it's back to you, Scott. Thanks, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, I want to – that last slide, Ken, I want to go back to that one just real quick. Uh, on this one here, the risk in trainings and, doc, and demonstrations, 
traditionally what, what Ken's talking about here and the biggest one here is oh, virtual commissioning is setting that all up. What we're seeing people do is setting up hardware in the loop for their trainers. It's not it's not virtual training and it's not um, simulated training. What it's what it's doing is putting the real the repeat the real excuse me, PLCs and automation hardware in front of the operators, connecting it to the digital model, maybe on a big screen of how that machine is going to operate. And they can then interact physically with the real controllers that are going to be on that real machine on that real shop floor. But yet see how that machine is going to operate before it's installed so they can go through all their training. So it increases the value to the, to the when it's installed, that day one, they don't have to take it offline for two days and train everyone on it. They can hit the ground running day one. And I think that's really an important differentiator of why you, one of the reasons you want to do virtual commissioning, opposed to all the other things Ken said. But I'm going to wrap things up here real quick, um, a little bit before we get to the q and got just a couple slides, one more slide here, and a little bit of a customer slide, and we'll talk about it. And really, it comes back to what NX is, right? And we talked about earlier how NX, next generation design, is really allowing engineers today to increase productivity substantially by using NX. We, do, we have and we will continue to develop the world's most productive modeling tools. Our solutions enable true multidisciplinary designs so you can include your entire engineering team to work concurrently from the same set of data. We have the ability to access one data source across all the areas needed to complete the design, from design to analysis to manufacturing to commissioning to automation. And we streamline that process across all the groups like presenting the data in the format needed to the person needed for the task they're about to complete. That's what enables collaborative design and management. One set of data across the entire enterprise presented in different formats. We can harness the power, the power of the computer and machine learning to complete design needs to meet all the requirements. And finally, you can help take, we can help you take advantage of emerging mainstream technologies to provide novel and cost-effective solutions. But let's go look at one thing Ken mentioned before, and this is the one he was talking about. There's a company, a company, Tronrod Engineering, has been a long-time customer, and they moved to Mechatronics Concept Designer for their commissioning part, NX, and they use TIA Portal. And what they've been able to do is they've been able to reduce their time to production, also while increase and in reducing the time they take to totally commission the machine. And the biggest thing Ken said, they talk in a video about this, is they had zero physical crashes the first time they turned on the machine. And this was the very first time that they had been able to accomplish that task in the history of the company. Um, in the interest of time today, we, what we did is there's a QR code here, and it'll be available if you get the replay or in the PDF if it's there. There's a YouTube video, it's about four minutes long, that's why we didn't play it today, where they actually tell you that story of how they built the machine, how they commissioned the machine, how the groups worked together, and how they had no crashes. So I do ask you after this to maybe go watch that movie, take a look at it, and the QR code's there for it. So what happens to companies that fail to, that fail to embrace digitalization? They fall behind the fast pace of te technology disruptions that can make products and businesses obsolete. We can help you digitalize your business to realize product innovation by bringing together your entire product innovation processes, people and information across departments, disciplines, including your partners and suppliers. We can help you manage and optimize the entire product lifecycle for your machine. And the path to digitalization begins by taking a new approach to your entire engineering process. Work with us and we can help show you the way. So to summarize, our strategy for NX is to deliver world-class engineering solutions that enable you to build the, the most comp comprehensive digital twin of your product, allowing you to integrate across engineering disciplines to give you the most personalized and adaptable solutions that meet your needs now and grow as your use of our products grow. And finally, leverage our open ecosystem, including, our, including all of our solutions that are open to allow you to share information across the enterprise and giving you the maximum opportunity to leverage the digital twin. So have you moved your design and engineering technology to the next generation? And I think with that, we're going to be going back to Mark at this point in time. Thanks very much. Now our presenters will answer questions from the audience.
Type your questions for Scott and Ken in the Ask a Question box on your screen, and we'll get to as many questions as time allows. Questions that we do not get to today will be posted online with the archive version of the webcast. Remember to download a certificate of completion and a copy of the presentation by using the Event Resources tab on the left side of the screen. And now on to the questions. And as we go, please feel free to continue typing in questions. Uh, what we don't get into uh, live, we'll, we'll address offline. So uh, first, you talked a lot about uh, virtual commissioning. Could you expand and review on, on why that's so important? I, I think virtual commissioning is is really important because it lets us it lets users well two things really it lets users test start testing their automation software and their automation systems a long time before the um, the real physical machine is constructed so that in itself saves time. Um, it also lets them, as, as an example that Scott talked about, it lets people identify problems and remove, resolve those problems before they get to commissioning the real machine. So it's much quicker and indeed much cheaper if you identify a clash in a virtual commissioning environment than it, if it happens on the uh, on the real machine. Um, so, and I think this is this is a big time saver and cost saver. For many of our customers, and you know, we have we have data that indicates probably with virtual commissioning, you're saving up to 30% of the time of the, of the time of um, the complete um, <clears throat> machine development cycle. Because commissioning, typically, especially if there's lots of problems in the automation, commissioning can take a huge amount of time. And if you can if you can overlap that with the, with the design of the machine and the uh, <clears throat> and the manufacture of the machine, then you know your elapsed time is is going to be uh, significantly shorter. You're going to get the product to market quicker. You're going to start earning money from sales much faster. So it's it, it's a big thing in that pure sense. And I also think for the customers, as, as Scott talked about, um, using virtual commissioning to support training activities also enables the customers to get their machine into production use, productive use much faster. And again, <clears throat> they're getting value from their investment in, in the new machine much faster. Okay. If, and I'll, I'll just add one quick thing onto that question for you. I think next one, Mark, is it, all the stuff we said before, it, 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 Ken reminded me of one thing. Um, during COVID, one of our customers at a trade show when they were just bringing people back, it was last minute kind of thing. And everyone says, yeah, we'll come, we'll come. But then you realize you can't ship your machines to a trade show, you know, during COVID, a lot of issues. So they were able to virtually show their machines off to their potential customers. Kind of, we talked about the training, but also it lowers the cost of doing sales. And as Ken talked with a salesperson one-on-one, -on -one, but also in trade shows, you can have multiple machines there with multiple setups and have people kind of look at them and do them. So that's another place where virtual commissioning really helps. Great, thanks. Uh, how can software enable better documentation across the machine design life cycle? I'll take that one because we didn't talk about it today and we talked about the complete portfolio, but one place where the NX team and the Siemens team is we're trying to lead the, the industry, just not just the machinery industry, but the design and engineering industry is through model-based definition. And we have tons and tons of tools to help you document the 3D model to eliminate the need to rely on drawings. Because at the end of the day, a drawing is a non-value added activity that's done for the purpose of documentation. And with today's gaming technologies and everyone being attuned to looking at things on tablets, phones, computers, being able to get that rich 3D experience for the people that need documentation, but have that preciseness that's needed for engineering is really where I think tools like NX and the entire Siemens suite are really setting the bar forward to kind of change engineering, right? Like I always joke, I'm so old that when I went to college, I didn't learn CAD, I learned how to, I actually learned to draw with pencils and French squares, right? And we've been talking about going drawing list since I was in college. Today we are not drawing list, we are paperless. And paperless, you know, we have PDFs of drawings, but now what we need to do is totally eliminate the drawings and put all of that rich 2D drafting material and content onto the 3D model and be able to people to easily absorb it. 
Great, thanks. And it's a lot easier to transfer from one stage to another now, too, not having physical things on paper. Correct. Yeah. Great. Uh, let's see. Um, where do you see the future of generative design in, in the machinery industry? I could take that one. I mean, generative means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But to me, at its core essence, generative design is really simulation-driven design. And that's really what we've been talking about here for the last, like, 45 minutes is you need to be able to simulate it digitally to be able to prove it out physically. And that's where this tool kind of is. When some people think of generative design, they start thinking of exotic shapes and organic shapes, which is part of it. But generative really to me is having the power of the computer do the work for you. And this way, being able to identify those things and quickly get up quick running simulations that you can base your design on is really going to help move the whole entire machinery industry forward. Great, thanks. Uh, can you talk a, a bit more about the multidisciplinary design in the context of reducing time to perform engineering change requests? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, to me, the key goes back to one set of data, right? If there's one data across all your disciplines, that allows you now to be able to execute a change order much faster because you're not having to go to system A do something, push it over to system B. What if somewhere along the way someone loses track of that data and the wrong data gets moved over or pushed across from, from one system to another or not taken care of with a change? And that's when a, an error can hit the shop floor, right, or the, or the final product. So I think that's really where it comes into play. Great. And... So uh, what's needed to help as people transition to digital twin and, and simulation design software? Um, I really think the biggest thing is it, it's a change of mindset, right? That, that's probably the biggest thing to overcome because we've all been doing it, depending on what, you know, what industry you're in and what field and stuff the ability to adapt to change, right? And, and say, is there a better way to do this? Um, there's another customer example we had out there that was doing, you know, they thought they were to the best place they could be. And when they reevaluated their engineering process and added in some new tools, they were able to take another 20% out of their process. It's really that openness to adapt to change. And that's just not just machinery. I think that's just engineering in general from what I, yeah. from what I see. Great, thanks. Uh, let's see. Uh, are there are there some industries that are further ahead in digital twin use, and can lessons there uh, that that we've learned teach uh, others in other industries? I'll take that one, Ken. Unless you want to say something. I mean, obviously, I mean, I think from a, from an industry standpoint, from Siemens Software, we really support like nine big industries. And yes, I think machinery in adoption of digital twin is a little bit behind, say, especially um, automotive, because automotive is trying to compress cycles to, to deliver new cars more and more every day, which it gets harder and harder to do because there's less room to compress, right, as you go shorter and shorter. So obviously, they're one of the, the you know, probably further along in digital twin than a lot of people. And it has not just to do with engineering, it has to do with things like autonomous driving and other things that you need to simulate a lot of. So they've really adopted digital twin. Um, and yeah, there's things we can learn from there, right? That we apply as a company when we look at our customers that are successful in one industry. Can we move some of that technology or ideas into other industries? So I don't know, Ken, do you want to add anything onto that one? No, I think, I think you're exactly right there. I think um, Machinery is a little behind other industries, but it's also um, some way in front of others as well. Great. Uh, do you offer um, certification courses for MCD, NX, and, and other software? Also, are there uh, educational uh, licenses uh, available? Uh, the first one, I, yeah, I mean, we do. There is, there is, especially at the university level, there is certified. Um, university students can take a test to be certified in NX, right? That they know how to use NX, and that test is available. 
And there also is incentives for educational licenses available for NX, usually at reduced to no cost at all. And there's different levels or student licenses, which we know are, of, we try to make it of no cost to students. Um, does include a lot of stuff. And then there's also at a university level, educational things where they can package not just NX, but many of our products together to help teach engineering classes. Um, the best one that would be to reach out to our educational teams and they can help you on that um, path. I see that's. Yeah, I, I guess I should add, we do have a number of universities, quite a large number of universities who are using um, MCD in their, in their um, courses. Good. Um, what are the time ranges for implementing digital twinning and getting a return on investment? I, I imagine it varies by application, but do you have some generalization to help with that? Some generalization is, uh, yeah, timing on implementing digital twins, that really goes back to where how mature a company is where we start, right? There's no one, that one's really no one answer fits all because it's where you are and how willing you're, you're willing you are to adapt to change like I talked about before. And that's really where as being a big company with Siemens or working with some of our partners, if, if they're not, you know, depending which sales channel you're in, that's really where we sit down with them and we sit down with you, everybody sits down. Where are you, where do you wanna to get to? Where's the first place you wanna do, right? Because some people may wanna do virtual commissioning first. Some people may wanna do other things first. There's just so many different ways we can go. And that's why I said, we don't just sell, we just don't have one recipe to get you there. It's really a, a back and forth constructive approach to how we really get you to the point you need to be on a digital twin. And the return on investment, yeah, we calculate that out. With any of these tools, when we can eliminate, if I go back to the video I talked about that we didn't play, but the, the customer, for them not to have a physical crash the first time they turn on a machine, that almost pays for everything day one. Because if you break a part out in the field, you have to go back and get one. It could be that machine just sitting there inoperable for a while. So there's a lot of reasons where that return on investment becomes lower than most people think about. Because I have seen some other questions through here, Mark, on cost and returns and stuff. And really, what's the cost of not having to send out 15 people to go fix a machine that was broke during physical commissioning and only sending out the crew of three or four that really need to install it? There's things like that, right? And that's where we have we have kind of an approach where it's like, well, how much do you spend on this, this, and this to really get that, that actual return in, in a detailed level, but at a high level, that's what I'll say on that. Oh, sure. And one out, it should take care of it in many manufacturing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So is there a way to simulate the dynamics of the, the physics of machines in your software? You talked a little bit about the importing uh, information from other mm -hmm. uh, softwares. I, I can, well, I can take that if you like. So, Go ahead, Ken. I mean, MCD really does, does have basic physics simulation in it. I mean, <clears throat> you can you can include as much, uh, quite a lot of physics in there. Now, clearly, our goal is something like near real-time simulation. So if you really want a high-end dynamic simulation, then MCD is really not the tool for you. You know, if you, if you want some basic um, dynamics physics simulation in there, so the machine does something that looks real, like if something falls off the conveyor, it falls down to the floor instead of floating in space, then MCD will do things like that. It will take some account of weight and friction. Um, to some extent, that's up to the user. I mean, the user can... We do let the user switch physics off in some parts of the simulation. If they're only really interested in a pure kinematic solution, then that will run much faster than solving all the physics. Um, so the answer is yes. There's lots of options there. We can talk about that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, Ken, you're right. There's an endless amount of options that we have from a simulation standpoint that covers with our SimCenter Center product that's part of the NX family. But even that's going further on in the physics. We also have a tool that really comes in some places where they start before they go to MCD with animation designer that's just totally motion-based and not physics-based where you can set up simple motion, just even see if it works, like a simple linkage and this and that, and spin parts around, make sure there's no interference. And, and that, those definitions of joints and links and forces move into MCD to help expedite that process. So we really have a complete suite 
almost back to Ken's first slide with the, with the funnel, right? We can really address mm -hmm. the simulation design needs at any level for any machine builder. Today, we were focused pretty much on, you know, single use machines with MCD, but Siemens has solutions for, for, for across the board. For that question, yeah, I, I'm I lost. Guess, oh, go ahead. I, I guess the other thing I should mention here is we also have the capability of uh, getting more accurate physics simulations from other simulation tools and packaging them up as a uh, functional mock-up unit and using that within MCD. So we, you can bring in more complex simulation if you want to. Sure. For that uh, question on cost, can you give some advice about um, it, it, is virtual commissioning worth that, that extra step if you are implementing the software? Well, how do you decide if it's uh, worth the value? Like Especially said, that's if you're one doing just a single single machine or single system. I always think it's worth it just from all the stuff we talked about today, right? The ability to create richer and um, to involve, if you're a machine builder especially, right, or even a consumer machines, being able to get that early upfront digital model that kind of runs how your machine is going to run, right? Being able to give that back to a customer versus maybe just a 2D layout drawing saying, look, here's what it's going to look like when it's running versus the ability to set up that commissioning, hooking up the actual physical hardware to it for hardware in a loop solutions, to know that that PLC was properly programmed and when it's connected to the real machine, right? Because crashing, crashing digital parts doesn't cost you anything except time, right? Crashing, crashing physical parts costs time because you have to redo stuff. So being able to hook those, those physical, the physical con controllers up to a digital model and watching it run the program and maybe triggering events like in Ken's example, triggering a, a, a safety screen, triggering something going wrong in the logic or something, right? And being able to see that all happen on the real machine that's going to maybe be installed on the shop floor. That's almost invaluable, right, to, to calculate those costs. Good. Well, uh, we have a couple of minutes left, so we're going to get to one more question. And please, if you think of any more before we wrap up, please submit them through the interface and we'll get to them offline. So uh, last question, where is the best place to start if I want to move my organization to Digital Twin? Well, the best place there is to reach out to, right? Reach out to our, to our, if you're already a customer, reach out to the people you're talking to today to let them know. And if you're not, reach out to whichever area of the world you're in to get involved with Siemens either directly or through our partner channels and have them sit down and really see what your needs are, right? From something like this, I can't say this is exactly what you need and you need to start here. We need to really sit down and have a, a collaborative discussion and find out what your goals are and where they match up with our goals and, you know, what your appetite is for how fast you can change or not, you know, moving forward. So. Well, great. Thanks very much uh, to our audience for the great questions. And, and thanks again to our great speakers, Scott Felber and Ken Sears, for sharing their time and their expertise. So uh, we'll wrap up and uh, with uh, special thanks to our sponsor for Siemens for sponsoring today's event. And, and now that we're just about done, we want to hear how we did. The exit survey will pop up on the screen as soon as the webcast ends. Please take a moment to complete it because we use this information to improve our webcasts. Finally, on behalf of Control Engineering and Siemens, we'd like to thank you for attending. This concludes our webcast. Thank you and goodbye.